Hi, I'm Arthur Lewis and welcome to the UTA Artist Space. I'm the creative director here and you are seeing our show that's up right now for fall, Emergency on Planet Earth, A Time Close to Now. We conceived this show in the summer of last year, not clearly understanding the impact that 2020 would have on our world and in our lives. So in this show, we hold a microscope up to all the things that are taking place and shine a light on opportunities to make things better for us as a human race. What I'm really excited about is the number of artists that we have in the show, like artist Tony Scott, whose beautiful sculpture I'm standing in front of, The Empire Strikes Black. All of the artists in Emergency on Planet Earth have brought their best to forbearance to make sure that they tell the story of how their work and making our planet better. My name is Tony Scott, and I am at United Artists Artist Space Gallery in Beverly Hills in an exhibit called Emergency on Planet Earth. It's an incredible exhibition with artists of many genres, painters and sculptors, videographers. The title of this exhibition is just right on time, and so I brought pieces today to enlighten, to heal, to educate. Don't take steps to arrest the situation now on the planet. I'm standing in front of my piece called The Empire Strikes Black. As in the movie Empire Strikes Back, that was featured in Star Wars, the title is a play on the movie and its title. It is comprised of maybe like 100, 150 queen palm fronds. The idea is thinking about the planet, our behavior towards the planet, and the absolute critical need to change our ways, to preserve it. And so nature here is reaching out saying, I'm here, I'm dropping pods, uh, seeds, I'm shedding, I'm growing. But are you hearing my voice? I'm in black. And black is the absence of color. So instead of seeing in its natural color, like green or yellow, it's a statement that we need to really pay attention. The another aspect of this is it represents a lot of what's going on today with Black Lives Matter. The empire representing America. The empire striking against people of color, poor people but particularly individuals that are just under extreme oppression or the structural racism, or simply, not simply, but the death of people at the hands of the police. This piece was, I think, oppressed by the empire, but still being strong and resilient, and, and its arms wide open to take flight, to find its future in a positive way. I Can't Breathe was first created in plaster in 2009 as an emotional response to the murder of Oscar Grant and so many black people who have been killed at the hands of the police. This year, I was deeply grieved by the death of George Floyd and decided to recast the bus in concrete. It's a combination of cement and an aggregate. Concrete is the material of the streets, a hard material that is the foundation on which many things are built. It is also the place where so many black people have violently perished. Both figures sit high on their bases, resurrected as if battered, but not broken. Death of the hands of the police is made of plaster bandage, body cast, and acrylic and wood and linen. Plaster bandages are designed to treat broken bones. Death at the Hands of the Police incorporates bandages as both a medium and a metaphor. It serves as a poignant reminder of the vulnerability of the body. A plaster cast of a man lying on the ground after a brutal encounter with the police. His only crime, walking while black. Signified by the target on his chest symbolizes the human toll. He is shrouded by a white cloth with the text, I can't breathe. The last words of Eric Garner expressed more than 11 times while dying on the sidewalk. Written in chalk are the names of people of color who have died as a result of police encounters, underscoring the erasure of those whose lives were taken. The chalk also symbolizes the easy erasure of names, the easy erasure of this history, and the ever-growing numbers to be added with chalk to extend our awareness about, again, how many people are dying in police custody. This is Black Eve we're standing in front of. She's made of fiberglass and she's seven feet tall. Black Eve has had many renditions. 
It's a, a narrative that starts with the beginning of time of humankind and brings us forward to today. She was first mitochondrial Eve, the first woman who marched out of Africa throughout the plains, throughout the country, throughout the world, and settled in different places along the way. I have a series called Bloodlines that talks about the African-American journey from Africa to America and then the experiences that African-Americans had here. So she's the first woman on the auction block. In that exhibition a rendition, she stands 10 feet tall and she has a shackle around her neck. Her shackle has since been removed and she's progressed again in her journey. She progressed to White Eve, Whitewashed Eve, and that symbolizes the history that so many people have covered up. And now that's you know being exposed more and more about early American history, slavery, indigenous genocide, the indigenous people, and so it's whitewashing history. She has since evolved to Black Eve, and Black Eve is where she'll stay, and she represents her culture as a black woman and the beauty and, and nobility of a culture that is often overlooked and undermined in representation in movies and books and so forth. She stands here with her arms missing, that symbolizes that she is still coming into her own. And so those arms are missing saying, look, I'm still moving forward, I'm still strong, but there's still a ways to go to be fully whole. And she's left rough on the surface and smooth because that's pretty much the journey. Sometimes it's rough, sometimes it's smooth. But with Eve striding forward, she stays on the road, moving forward and never surrendering. Indigo Sacred Water Paintings. This series of performed paintings is deeply tied to my African, African American, and Native American ancestral heritage. They embody more than 10,000 years of ceremonial practices and beliefs by my indigenous Muscogee Creek ancestors who lived as protectors of the earth and the waters covering it. Each of these cultures in their own way embrace song, dance, libation, and prayer ceremonies, offering water to ancestral spirits, giving praise to God first, and then honoring the earth and those who walked on it before them. My hope is to build bridges between the old and new worlds and these living prayers, my indigos. Cosmos represents the universe. It is a guiding light to humankind by its stars, engaging our imagination to voyage across seas, lands, and galaxies. The other piece is called Libation Waterfall, and it represents libations to the ancestors, respect to the water, and to keep in mind that the preservation of the earth and the waters and how critical they are for our survival.